Last week in Israel, for the very first time, there was a member of Knesset that was elected by the name of Shirley Pinto. And Shirley Pinto is the very first ever deaf member of Knesset elected, and she took her oath of office using sign language. Now, in America, we've never had a member of Congress or Senate that has been deaf. This week's Torah portion begins with the word Vayar, and he saw. It talks about Balak, the king of Moab, seeing what the Jews had done to the Amorites and hiring Bilaam to come and curse the Jewish people. And it's interesting that while this week's Torah portion begins with the word Vayar, and he saw, we had a Torah portion in Shemos that began with the words Vayishma, and he heard. And there it talks about Yisro hearing about everything that God had done for the Jewish people by taking them out of Egypt with all the miracles and the splitting of the sea. And his reaction was, I want to join the Jewish people. And he comes out into the desert and he converts to Judaism. And here you have the contrast between seeing and hearing. Balak sees what the Jewish people did to the Amorites and he decides to curse the Jews. Yisro hears what God did for the Jewish people and he decides to become a part of the Jewish people and a blessing to the Jewish people. What is the difference between seeing and hearing? Seeing is only what is physical. Hearing is hearing the spiritual which cannot be seen. You see, Balak looked at the Jews and said, you see, they're a mighty nation. We need to go defeat them and curse them. But Yisrael said, look, look at the miracles that God has performed for them. Clearly, they are a godly nation. And that inspired them, him to want to become a part of the Jewish people. So too, till today, 3,330 years later, there are those who look at Israel and see a powerful nation and seek to curse it. There are those who hear about all the wonders and the miracles that God has performed for the Jewish people that has allowed them to survive and overcome all the mighty nations that have tried to annihilate them and they become a source of blessing to the Jewish people. But it goes one step further. What did Balak see what the Jews did to the Amorites? What did the Jews do to the Amorites? In last week's Torah portion, Moshe sends a message to the king of the Amorites, Sichon, and he says, I want to pass through your land. I'm not going to drink from your waters. I'm not going to go into your vineyards, into your fields. I'm just going to walk peacefully through your land. The minute Sichon, the king of the Amorites, hears this, he gathers his army, his troops, and he goes out to attack the Jews, to kill them. Jews fight back. God helps them and defeat their enemies. When Balak hears that the Jews killed the Amorites, in battle, he says, I need to go destroy them. You see, the problem with Balak is that he only saw one piece of the picture. He failed to hear the backstory. He failed to understand and hear and comprehend what led to the battle, why the Jews had to fight against the Amorites, and how Moses sent a peaceful message to walk through the land just on their journey to Israel and not even drink their water or touch their fields or their vineyards. But in his desire to destroy the Jewish people, he went out in an attack that was unprovoked against the Jewish people and the Jews were merely defending themselves. As opposed to Yisro, who didn't just see the 10 plagues, he saw what the Egyptians had done to the Jewish people and how God had saved the Jewish people. And how true this is until this very day. There are those who just look at Israel and they say, look, Israel's bombing Gaza. That's terrible. And they curse Israel and, and speak ill of Israel. and defame Israel and try to harm Israel. And then there are those who say, well, a minute, let's listen, let's understand what led to Israel bombing Gaza. That in an unprovoked war, Gaza went and started to shoot thousands and thousands of missiles down on Israeli citizens and civilians and homes and men, women and children. And Israel was just trying to stop the rockets and defend themselves. And so the bollocks of the world who try to curse the Jews live on today and they live on on the covers of many national newspapers and media outlets as opposed to the Yisros of the world live on till today. Those who understand the story of the Jewish people and become a source of blessing to the Jewish people. You know, this past Friday in Iran, they elected a new president who is a ruthless murderer who everyone knows is the hangman of Tehran who has the blood of thousands of Iranians on his hand. This was on Friday, of course it was a rigged election. On Sunday, two days later, world leaders sat down again in Austria to continue talking about a nuclear deal with such a hangman, with such a terrorist, with such a murderer. This is how deaf and blind the world is to the realities. 
And it's almost laughable that just three months ago in April, there was an explosion at one of Iran's nuclear plants called the Natanz plant. There was this huge explosion which destroyed this nuclear facility. And now with the retirement of Yossi Kohn, the head of the Mossad, it was revealed that this indeed was a sabotage by Israel. And Israel had managed through the Mossad to put explosives in the concrete that was being sold to the Iranians to use in this underground facility. And the very concrete that they purchased to build this underground facility contained the explosives, which were then detonated by Mossad and blew up this facility. And Iran lashed out at Israel and said, Israel's gonna pay a price for this. We will retaliate against this nuclear terrorism, against the criminal enterprise Israel. And you say, really? Israel's a criminal enterprise? Nuclear terrorism? When you are building a nuclear facility and you've stated clearly that your goal is to destroy and kill all of the Jews living in Israel, and then you accuse Israel of being a terrorist state for defending itself. That's like Balak saying, look what the Jews did to the Amorites with failing to understand what led to that. Every war Israel has fought was in self-defense. Israel was ready to live in peace in 1948 and 1967, 1973. And time and again, the Arabs attacked Israel to destroy it and we won every war. And there are those who say, wow, what an inspiration the Jews are, the Israelis are, a little nation that just survived the Holocaust. They overcame so much and look what happened. They built their nation and God is on their side. I want to be a blessing to Israel. And then there are those like Balak who only see one piece of the picture, fail to understand the story and hear what's really going on and condemn Israel. And that's what the Torah portion teaches us until this very day. Those who want to understand will come to a different conclusion than those who just want to see one piece that they want to see, and that is the aggressive Israel that's tormenting or oppressing the Palestinians. There's a story told about a Jew who's coming home on his, uh, with his wagon, and a bandit attacks him and says, give me all your money. The poor Jew gives up all his money. And as the uh, highway robber is about to leave with his gun held at him, the Jew says, can you do me one favor? And the highway robber says, yeah, what would you like? He says, you know, when I come home, my wife's gonna scream at me that I, I lost all my money all my possessions, can you do me a favor, shoot some bullets into my wagon so I could at least show my wife that I was confronted by a, an armed man and I had to fight for my life and I put up a good fight. And the man said, okay. He starts shooting bullets into the wagon and then he runs out of bullets. The minute he runs out of bullets, the Jew attacks him, beats him to the ground and takes back all of his money. And as the Jew is about to ride off with his possessions, the highway robber, the bandits laying on the ground, beaten and bruised, and he looks up at the Jew and says, I should have known you can never trust a Jew. You're all a bunch of liars. That's the joke of the world that accuses Israel rather than puts the blame because like Balak, they just want to be able to curse the Jews. But thank God we have many Yisros in the world who do understand and come to the defense of the Jewish people and speak up for Israel just like Jethro did when he recognized and understood and heard that God is behind all of this and that the Jews only did what they did to be able to defend and protect themselves. Have a wonderful day.